Good morning, my name is Brian. I am the owner operator at Boathouse Smokers down here in South Louisiana. You know, one of the most commonly asked questions that we get from new customers is, how do I light my fire and how do I maintain that fire and keep consistent temps throughout the cook process? Well, today, let's talk a little bit about that. All right, this is the cooker that we're gonna be working with today. It is one of our larger uh, offsets. Uh, cook chamber is 48 by 44 by 24, and it does have the four rack uh, vertical cabinet above the firebox. Now, this guy is a reverse flow. Don't let that extra stack up there fool you. I'm actually going to make a, a, a separate video that's going to explain the madness behind that extra stack on our reverse flow. Let's take a look at the inside of the cooker. All right, as you can see, you can see that big quarter inch baffle plate down in there. Now that thing serves two purposes. It runs almost the entire length of the cook chamber, uh, which allows your heat to transfer from your firebox all the way to the left side of the cook chamber before it's released. It also, if you notice, is sitting on about a 10 degree angle. All right, and what that does is it allows all your grease drippings to drip down and they will gravity feed all the way to the left side of the cook chamber and then fall down into that grease trap down there in the bottom. And if you look on the outside, we actually have a ball valve where you could open and close to dispose of that grease properly. So anyway, that's about it for the cooker. Let's uh, let's build a fire in this guy. All right, let's talk about the wood. Uh, the most important thing uh, when selecting a firewood is not really the type of wood that you select. It's making sure that the moisture content is low and make sure that the wood that you are using is good seasoned firewood. A lot of these guys are selling this stuff on Facebook and Craigslist and it claims to be seasoned wood and about 50% of it is not. Uh, so do yourself a favor. If you don't have a moisture meter, go out and get you a moisture meter and make sure that the wood you're using is good, clean, dry firewood. It could be the difference between a, a successful cook and a bad cook. Uh, a lot of you new guys will become easily frustrated when you're really doing nothing wrong, you're just using wet wood. So uh, just something to keep that in mind. If you don't have a moisture meter, run out and get you one. Uh, today, we are gonna be using pecan wood. This stuff is readily available down here in South Louisiana everywhere due to the storms we get every year. Uh, I'll have a couple of cords on hand always. Uh, this stuff here, it's been in my possession for about three years. So I know that's good in season, it's good and dry and it's ready to go. So let's get to it. All right, here we go. Now what I like to do when I build my fire is I'll put a base across the bottom uh, and then I'll build my fire on top of that. And the reason why I do that, is it kind of holds your embers and stuff up without letting them fall through the grade until you get a good coal base established. So uh, look, I, I'm a patient guy. I like the older way of doing things. Uh, I like my temps to come up slow. I want everything to come up slow. I don't want a big, big hot fire box. You know, I don't want to run my flame up to a thousand degrees in the fire box and have it settle down later. I'd rather bring everything up equal uh, at the same time, low and slow. It should take anywhere from about an hour and 15 minutes to an hour, 30 minutes for this big guy here to come up to temp. So uh, here we go. What I do, I do use, I'm not completely old school. I do use one of these fire sticks. So uh, I like to use those. They tend to work well for me. So all I'll do is I'll light my fire stick. And I'll do it right on top of that, that wood that I have in there. All right, and then I'll just come back and I'll put some killing on top of this. That's how I get it started. Normally, I'll let that run for about 10 or 15 minutes and uh, we'll get back and we'll take a look at it. So right now it is 9.07. We'll check back with you guys in a little bit. All right, here we are about 30 minutes in. Let's uh, take a look in that firebox. Got a good little fire going in there. Let's take a look at the, the top right door. It's reading about 152 degrees. Bottom right door, about 148. Left bottom door, about 148. Uh, top left door is about 155 or 160, something like that. These tips will start to level out once this thing comes up to temp and starts drafting correctly. At this point right here, being since it's such a large cook chamber, I'm gonna start adding a little bit more wood. 
I'm gonna throw another splitter two on there to get that temp to come on up. And uh, all right, I'll check back with you guys in a, in a few minutes. All right, here we are coming up on the one hour mark. As you can see, we're starting to get a really good draft. Uh, the smoke is really starting to clear up. It's almost a translucent that's coming out of that exhaust, which is what you want to see. You don't ever want to see any white billowing smoke coming out of the exhaust while you have food on. Uh, let me tell you a little bit right now. The way that I had this cooker set up is if you notice, I have the two exhaust stacks on the cook chamber fully closed, and I have the one on the cabinet uh, fully opening. So what's happening right now is your heat's coming out of your firebox, it's coming into your cook chamber, it's running underneath that baffle plate, it's coming up into the cook chamber, and then it's coming across. Now right here in the center of the cooker, uh, I have a dampener. And you, as you can see, you can come around the back side, and I have a valve where you can open and close that dampener. Right now I have it in a fully open position. So what that's doing is allowing that heat to come up, flow across, and flow into the warming cabinet, and then flow up and out the exhaust. So uh, let's take a look at the temps right now. Top left, uh, it's running about 250. Bottom left, 225. Bottom right, 227. Uh, top right, about 227, something like that. Let's take a look in the firebox. I did throw in a split of wood in here a while ago. Uh, starting to develop a good little bed of embers down there is what you want. Uh, you don't wanna, when you throw a split of wood on there, you do not want to increase the cook temp when you do that. When you throw a split of wood on there, all you're really doing is you're trying to replace the embers that are that are burning out in the bottom. Uh, that's where your flavor comes from. That's when your where your real consistent uh, temps are going to come from. So it, the more the longer the cook, the more be, uh, better coals you get down in there, the, the more easier it's going to be to maintain temps. So uh, anyway, let me. Uh, Give you another update in about 30 minutes or so. We ought to be ready to put some food on at that point. All right, right now we're at the 90 minute mark. Now, uh, keep in mind, this is a large offset cooker. Uh, on a smaller scale, it shouldn't take, you know, an hour and a half to come up to temp or before you're ready to put your meat on. But just keep that in mind that the larger the cooker, the longer it is, it's gonna take for it to come up to temp and start drafting and burning correctly. So uh, take a look at that exhaust. You can hardly see any smoke at all coming out of there. We got a really efficient, clean burn. Uh, all the temps are pretty equal, running about 250 degrees. Uh, the fire is a little bit bigger than I would like it to be, uh, which is why we're running 250. It's a little hot for my taste. I like to cook somewhere around 225, uh, 230, somewhere in there. Uh, but at this point, it is safe to go ahead and, uh, and put your proteins on and start to cook processes. And uh, at this point, we're just gonna try to maintain. So uh, I'll come back and I'll talk to you a little bit about how to maintain consistent temps throughout the process. All right, we have reached our target temps. Everything is locked in pretty much at 225. We got a really clean burn going. You can't hardly see any smoke even coming out of that exhaust, uh, which is what you want. Let's take a look inside this firebox. Fire is really settled down. We're getting a good little coal bed down in there. Uh, what you want to do is you're just going to have to figure this out for yourself. I mean, there, there's no science to it. I, I know from experience that in this particular cooker, I can add a split of wood about every 40 minutes to maintain 225, and that will do so indefinitely. Uh, depending on the scale of your, your cooker and what you're using and what you're doing, uh, you just have to figure out for yourself. You know, maybe you can add a smaller split every 30 minutes or a larger split every hour. Just, you're just gonna have to figure out what works for you. Uh, in this situation right here, like I said, I know from experience what I need to do, how I need to add, and what I need to do to maintain, and what size wood I need to do to maintain. Uh, another little trick you can do, it's not really a trick, everybody does it, uh, is by preheating your wood. I'll stick my wood in this cabinet, or if this was just a regular offset, I would have my wood actually sitting up on top, preheating. And what that does, it allows your wood to warm up. So when you throw it into the firebox, it ignites it immediately. It doesn't sit there and smolder and produce that bad smoke, uh, which is pretty common when you throw a cold piece of wood onto a hot fire. So anyway, that's about all I got for you guys today. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you can reach me on all of my social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and TikTok. And uh, look forward to hearing from you guys.
and uh, good luck in the future, and we'll see you around.